This is the 60th lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about how fiber works. And we're going to do it with some videos and some animations. It's easy to see how fiber works if you use a large core plastic fiber and a visual fault locator or a laser pointer. Note how you can see the light entering and leaving the fiber at either end, but you don't see much light leaving the fiber and the coils of fiber in the center. That's because the fiber is designed to trap the light in the core of the fiber so it can be transmitted over long distances. Here we can show how the light turns on and off to simulate the way we actually transmit data in a fiber optic link. We can also use a large plastic rod and a laser pointer. It shows how light is actually reflected off the boundary of the core of the optical fiber. And the angle can be changed and you can actually see the light bouncing back and forth. These rays in this plastic are what we call modes in optical fiber. The optical principle that makes fiber optics work is called total internal reflection. It's what you see when you stick a pole into the water and it bends, or if you're swimming underwater and look at the surface above, you can actually see a reflection. This principle is described by Snell's Law, which says that when a light ray travels from a material of one index of refraction to another, that the light is bent and the amount that it's bent is determined by the index of refraction of the two materials. Total internal reflection causes light to be trapped in the core of an optical fiber. And that happens because of the difference in the index of refraction between the core and the cladding. When a light ray enters at too high an angle, the ray will go off into the cladding but the angle will be reduced and eventually it will reach a point in the cladding where it's nearly parallel to the boundary between the two and then eventually lays along the boundary. From that point, that angle, all light rays will be totally internally reflected into the core of the optical fiber and transmitted to the end. There are three different types of fibers. Multi-mode step index, multi-mode graded index, and single mode. They differ in both the size of the core and the composition of the core. The core is always a higher index of refraction material. But in step index fiber, the core is all the same and the cladding is different. In graded index fiber, there is a change in the index of refraction across the core, which guides the, the rays or modes of light differently. Single mode fiber is simply a small enough core that it only propagates one mode of light. And we'll look at how each of these work in animations that follow. Step index multimode fiber propagates lots of rays or modes inside the core of the fiber and all the rays travel in straight lines, essentially bouncing from core cladding interface on either side of the fiber. The rays travel in straight lines down the center and at various angles limited by the total internal reflection angle of the fiber, what we call the numerical aperture. Because all of the rays travel in straight lines in different distances, they tend to take various times to get through the core of the fiber, and that causes dispersion. So the biggest problem with step index fiber is its low bandwidth capability. Graded index multimode fiber has a core that has different indices of refraction that get lower as you get to the outside of the core. It's a bit like a Fresnel lens, if you know what that is. Those big glass 
serrated lenses they use in things like lighthouses. As the light goes through the core it, and goes from layer to layer, it's bent toward the core on one side, away from the core on the other side, until the light follows essentially a sinusoidal path through the core of the fiber. Because the index of refraction of the glass is lower to the outside of the core, the rays or modes of light speed up in the outside of the core. And you can balance the time it takes all the different modes of light to get through the fiber to increase the bandwidth of the um, graded index core fiber. And that's why graded index fiber is preferred for higher bandwidth applications. Here's the typical diagram you see of multi-mode fiber. The difference in the index of refraction across the core causes all the modes of light in the core to essentially take the same amount of time to get from point A to point B, meaning that graded index multi-mode fiber has a much higher bandwidth than step index. Then we have single-mode fiber. Single-mode fiber has the highest bandwidth because it only has one mode of light being transmitted down the center of the core. Single mode fiber is created very simply. You simply shrink the core until it's only a couple of times more in diameter than the wavelength of the light. So the light can't bounce back and forth in the core. It just goes straight through. And that's what gives single mode fiber its extremely high bandwidth. So that's all there is to it. It's very simple. It's all a matter of optics and some very, very sophisticated engineering on the part of the companies that design and manufacture all that optical fiber. Be sure to look at all the other videos that the FOA has on YouTube and check out the FOA guide on our website with about a thousand pages of technical information on fiber optics. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the internationally known certifying body for fiber optics.